at home shooting clinic number five. Um, just to, to start, I asked my Keep Shooting subscribers, everybody that I work with individually within my virtual platform, I was like, what should I, what should I talk about in the next at home shooting clinic? And there were a variety of, a variety of answers that came through or suggestions, I guess. But the number one thing that came through was just confidence. Um, so nothing even related to really the physical side of shooting the basketball, but you know, what do we do to gain confidence or if we're struggling with confidence? And uh, it just kept popping up as the, the main thing that people wanted to hear. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about kind of what I see as kind of the three pillars of confidence when it comes to shooting the basketball, but I think it can be applied in anything that we do. You know, confidence isn't just reserved for, for shooting the basketball. Confidence comes with our daily interactions in life, whatever our career choice is, all that kind of stuff. So um, I hope that this can be beneficial to you because I've, I've kind of uh, almost developed this, this method or this, uh, this blueprint kind of just on my own in terms of how I've gone through things. And this is what has worked for me. And, and hopefully I, it can shed some light uh, on on the confidence issue and and help you get to get to where you want to go with it. Before I start that, um, I just wanted to say I've been lunging every day, and I don't think I've talked about this on here, but I've been adding, or maybe I have, but I've been adding kind of like a new discipline every month, right? So it's something that at first I saw it as addition, I saw it as um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this, I'm going to do that. So it, I guess it, it kind of seems like I'm adding it to my life, but in reality, by adding these things, I'm taking away more things. So in November of 2022, when I cut out sugar, you know, the cutting out of sugar removed more processed foods. So it actually kind of narrowed down what my food choices were. And it's been, it's been huge for me. Um, and every month I've been just kind of adding things as, as I've gone. And, and for the month of February, um, it's been lunging 400 meters. At first, my goal was to lunge every single day for 90 days. I got to day 13 or 14 and my body, my body needed a break. So I've been going now. What I'm doing is today, today will be day 21. Um, but I've been going six days break, six days break. And I just feel like, while I wish I could do every day, that little break helps. Um, the reason that I even bring it up is because it's going to tie into what we're going to talk about today from the confidence side of things. I was on the phone with Rob Fodor, the, uh, the shooting coach with the Heat, and we were, we were talking and, and randomly we started, we started bringing this stuff up. And uh, now he's doing the lunges. So Rob, if you see this, now you're really being held accountable because everybody is going to know that you're doing them. But we started to talk about how valuable it is to just do something hard every day. Life can be so easy. And there's something to be said about just going out and doing something that sucks, that puts you in a place both menti mentally and physically that a, lot of, that a lot of things can't. I know for me, it puts me in a state of mind where even like, I don't even, I don't even like saying this, like where I'm at today, I, I'm starting, I feel like I'm starting to make a name for myself and being able to, to do more and more things on the basketball side of things. But there's always a part uh, of me and kind of in the back of my mind that's always like, is this going to stop? You know, is uh, is all of a sudden I'm going to wake up and nobody's going to want to hear what I have to say or no one is going to want to hire me to help them with their shooting and all that kind of stuff. And doing something like lunging 400 meters a day kind of helps kind of helps get me out of that mental place. Right. It kind of it kind of helps with with my confidence in that. OK, no matter what, I'm, I'm going to do something. I'm going to get through it. And it starts to get my mind kind of trending in the right direction of, you know, each day doing things that add up to who this person is that you, you deep down think you are, right? And I think there's just extreme value in doing it, right? So that, that idea of doing something hard every day, you know, for you, maybe it's, it's, it is going out there and, and, and really being super deliberate about what you're trying to change and shooting the basketball. Um, whatever it is, 
there's, there's value to it. So I just wanted, I wanted to share that. I also know that like Rob and I are boys because when I told him what I was doing, uh, his answer to it or his response on the other, other phone, uh, on the other end of the phone was just, hell yeah, you are. And it's interesting that when some people find out that I'm doing it, the first question they ask is why? Like, why are you doing that? Like, you're not training, you're not training for anything. And Rob was just like, yeah, hell yeah, you're doing that. Like, that's, he's like, that's what we, that's what we need to do. And uh, he was like, when we, get to, when we get older, it's like we're looking for these challenges. We're looking to still compete in some fashion, but we don't really have anybody to compete with. And so what do we do is we start to compete like with father time, right? And, uh, and as Rob said, who, he is undefeated. But we, we agreed on the phone that Father Time still hasn't met us yet. So we're going to see. We're going to see who comes out victorious on, on the other side. But do something hard today. Do something hard, hard every day. Whatever it is. I mean, maybe it's not for, lunging 400 meters, but try something. I'm telling you, get your mind going in ways that you can't really. It's hard to even, for me to even put into words. There's some people out there that, that do it phenomenally well in terms of the, the connections that the you know, stimulating muscle sends to the brain and all that kind of stuff. So... So go out there and, and do something today, I would say. Let's, let's just start, start with that. But as for the main part of what we're going to talk about today, it's, it's just, it's confidence. And I come from a unique place in what I do because I work with so many players that are struggling to shoot the basketball. So obviously where they're at from a, uh, from a confidence standpoint, you know, it, it ranges. I've, I've worked with some players that struggle to shoot the basketball but are, are still extremely, extremely confident in what, in what they're able to do. But uh, sometimes it's hard to kind of argue with reality, uh, but we're going to talk about why we, we need to do that. I kind of, I break down confidence into three parts. There's the physical, right? What we can control on the physical side. There is um, the mental. Uh, and then, then there's the social component to it, right? The physical side is pretty cut and dry. Right. When it comes to especially when it comes to shooting the basketball. But again, like this can be transferred over into anything. When it comes to shooting. We need some type of system or some type of blueprint to follow initially to get us kind of on track to where we want to go. Right. That's where I think I come into play. Right. I'm, I'm going to help you provide. I'm going to help provide this blueprint that's going to give you an understanding of where it is that you ultimately want to go. In working through the physical side of shooting. It's unique in that we're trying to take away things. We're not trying to add things, right? So if you kind of think about, you go into this approach of, okay, I'm not shooting the basketball well. What I'm going to tell you is I'm going to say, hey, look, okay, you're not shooting the ball well, but the good news is I'm not going to add to anything that you're doing. We're just going to take away from what you're doing. And we're just trying to boil everything down to get it as simple and repeatable as possible, right? Because the more simple it is, the easier it is to repeat. Now, it's not easy to go out there every single day on the physical side either and put in these really, really deliberate reps. But there is something to be said that is gained through doing that, through going out every single day, just diving in to shooting the basketball, following the system, following the blueprint, knowing what you have to work on day in, day out, being there physically and doing it. That is huge. And it's such a big component of anything that you want to be good at, right? I would say more often than not, players do not struggle with the physical side of it, right? They already know that there's something that they want to do, um, and the physical side is very easy to grasp. I equate it to, you know, at one point in my life, I was super out of shape. I was in a car accident, came off the car accident, got super out of shape, um, and then discovered the weight room and just fell in love with it. And the physical side of that is what made me fall in love with it. I could go and I could see progress physically and, all, and, and, and everything that I did. Shooting can be kind of similar in that, you know, we can fall in love with the process, see the ball go in, we fall in love with the physical side. Um, but really, it's where we live mentally that's going to determine what we're going to do um, with that particular part of our lives, whether it be in the weight room, whether it be on, on the court. So the mental side is where things start to get a little bit tricky. Right. Um, I've done a lot of work on this myself through different meditations, things um, just through working out things on my own, trying to almost trick myself into what I was going to be, even though in that moment I knew that I was not. And 
uh, during the month of January, my, my goal that I added to, or I guess you could say take away, was I wanted to listen to nothing but material that was dealing with the subconscious mind. Right? I wanted to, I didn't want to listen to any music. I didn't, uh, I tried to limit my, my scrolling on social media, all that kind of, I wanted to see what it'd be like if I started to curate kind of the information that was being thrown at me. Because I, I don't think we realize just how much we're taking in on a daily basis that affects the way that we, the way that we think. Um, so the first part of this, you may not be a great shooter right now, or maybe you were having really, really good results and you're not, you're not seeing what you maybe, uh, you're, not, you're not experiencing what you've experienced prior. My first big piece here is you need to be able to kind of see beyond what your senses are telling you. And that's going to be a, a strange thing because we live in such a, a factual world. This has to happen this way, right? We have our five senses. We have to almost feel beyond that because if you're not able to feel beyond that, you're never going to be able to pull yourself out of this kind of mental, mental funk that you're in. Neville Goddard has a quote. He said, if, a, if, a, psychological, if a, a physical fact can bring forth a psychological state, then a psychological state can bring forth a physical fact, right? You are what you think about. And the world, for the most part, when you boil it down, um, is all a culmination of what somebody thought. We drive by things every single day, and it's the, think about the most simple things. You see street signs, right? Somebody thought of a street sign one day. They did not exist, but somebody saw it, and then they were like, okay, this makes sense to have street signs. They brought it to, to be in the physical world. What you think about is going to directly impact what you're able to do, right? Not what you're doing just in this current moment, although we'll bring this full circle in terms of, you know, things have to match up. But if you can be able to put yourself in the feeling of what it would be like to be making shots on a consistent basis, to be that confident player, you're going to start to see your life play out in that fashion as well. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but you have to be willing to put yourself in that future version of you and kind of ignore all of the things that are happening in the present moment in terms of what a score sheet is telling you or what somebody else is saying on social media. Can you live in this kind of end vision of what it would feel like to be the most confident player there is? And it's, it's much easier said than done, but if you can start to curate your world in a way where you're able to observe what you're thinking, you're able to um, not just take everything for what it is, but when you see or uh, have a negative thought that pops up in your mind about how you shot the basketball as, as of recent, can you kind of just take a step back and understand that those are just thoughts and they do not have to, they do not have to play out in reality moving forward? right? So what you think about is ultimately what you are going to become in some way or another. I can tell you this firsthand. I used to be at these nine to five jobs. And in my mind, when I'm going to these jobs, I wouldn't tell people what I did for a living in that job. I would tell people that I, I taught shooting, even though it was 0.0001% of my income at the time right? In my mind, that's who I was and that's where I was ultimately going to be. I remember going to a park bench at the one job that I worked at every single day and I would sit there and I would just close my eyes and I would literally put myself in the feeling of, of doing what I'm doing right now. Every, every day I would do it. And little by little, you don't realize the progress that you're starting to make um, while doing that. You, you build up this sense of confidence knowing it's going to happen because you're replaying that in your mind over and over and over again. My physical world was telling me, you work this desk job, you work here from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., you drive an hour home every night, but my mental world was telling me, I'm the best shooting coach in the world. And that's, that's where we kind of have to be able to get to on the side of shooting the basketball where there's no reason you shouldn't think that you're the best shooter in the world, but it takes deliberate action. Just like on the physical side, it takes deliberate repetition to be able to, 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 to take the changes that you want to take and have them really manifest in reality. 
what you're doing on the mental side is just as, if not more important. That's why you see players that when they're like, oh, he's an amazing practice player, or he works so hard, right? It's only half of the battle at the end of the day, right? What that player is actually deep down thinks about himself is going to be what happens come game time or when the lights come on. Oftentimes you'll have players that work their butt off, but what they're trying to do is just outwork where they're actually at mentally, and you can't. It's, it's impossible to outwork what you actually think about yourself. So unless you're willing to change your thought patterns, change what you're taking in on a daily basis, um, that's going to prove to be extremely difficult. And where this kind of starts to come back around to the physical side is, it's not enough just to think it, right? But what happens is, if we start thinking from that end goal of what we want to be, and we start to assume the feeling of what it's like to be the best, and to make shots on a consistent basis, and to be that guy, that we ultimately know that we can be, us thinking that way puts everything in motion for us to continue to do what we need to do physically, right? It's really hard to put yourself in the state of mind of being the best and then get up and then not do anything that day, right? Because that's not what being the best does, right? You can't have one without the other. Just like you can't put in all of the time on the physical side and expect never to work on the way that you think and expect that to turn out well, you can't just put in things on the mental side and think that all of a sudden uh, that shot is going to be built by itself by you not getting in the gym, right? So there is a balance here, right? We, we need both of them. And unless we're working on both and they're working you know, in connection with each other, then things are going to be, to be really difficult. We can't be out of balance with one versus the other, right? They both have to match up. But if I, I really do believe that it starts with kind of ignoring what's happening in the present in terms of what, uh, in terms of what anybody else is saying or what, you know, what your stats are saying or, or what your coach is saying and being able to see yourself well beyond and see yourself what you're able to become because that is going to start to be the catalyst for the steps that you're going to be able to take on the physical side of actually becoming that. I think there's, there's extreme power in that word by itself is, is, is becoming. I remember, um, and I've, I've told this story before, but you know, I still carry it around with me is on a, on a piece of hotel note, pa- uh, hotel note paper. In 2016, I wrote down on this sheet of paper, I just said, I said, become the best shooting coach in the world. Right. And there's like there's such power in that word and me writing it down that every day I can look at that and I can kind of go back to that state in time where I was in a hotel at a work event with absolutely no momentum going in the game of basketball whatsoever to now where I stand eight years later. To me, it it was all a matter of just shifting where I was up here and then everything else started to take take place and, and, and take form. The, the way that, that I believe it should. The last part is the social component. And what I mean by this is the people that you have around you, right? Who, what, who is in your ear and what are, they, what are they telling you? I've been fortunate enough, fortunate enough now that I've gotten to spend some time with some amazing, amazing players. And there was a recent situation with, with some players that I won't say that you'll know who they are very soon. And when I showed up to the particular event or uh, the particular training, all I kept hearing about was what they could not do. The people around them were just saying, oh man, they they have this, but they can't do this and they can't do that and they can't do this. I can't imagine what it would be like for a young player to constantly be told what you can't do. The people around you saying what, what you're not capable of doing. And my first thing there was trying to go in and flip the switch in terms of, listen, this is what you can do. And you inevitably can make it work. It's not going to be an overnight thing. But like anything, we're going to chip away at it. We're going to start to see the progress. And what you're, able, what you're going to be able to become is, is going to be very, very special. And... If you find yourself around people that are constantly telling you what you can't do, um, it's not easy, but I would really recommend removing yourself from those situations. I spent time with a parent of a kid that I work with, an extremely high level player, and he said something at breakfast one day. We were just talking and, and he told me that from the very beginning when his kid told him what he wanted to do, he made it his job to curate a world 
in which everything aligned with that child's vision, right? When nobody, when this kid was on nobody's recruiting list or no big schools were after him, he already had it in his mind that every, every person that came into that kid's life, every situation, every team that he walked into was going to align with the vision that the kid had, just continuing to build up his confidence because he knew just how powerful that was. And I, I can't explain just how powerful that is for, for a kid, um, for anybody. I know I would not be where I am without the social component of, of my wife, right? If I did not have her to tell me, oh, this, this is what you can do. This is who you are, right? And I'm going to back you 100% of the way. Then maybe I'm not sitting here right now and I'm not doing what I get to do. So be very, you know, it's a, it's a cliche thing, right? Like, you know, you got to surround, surround yourself with the people that, that believe in you or, or want the best for you. But as cliche as it is, it's, it's 100% legitimately true. And I can speak from a coach's standpoint I hope that I relay to every player that I work with how much I believe in them. And there's a uh, there's a story about Michelangelo. And uh, I don't know how true the story is, but apparently he would look at like a granite stone or a marble stone or whatever he carved thing. And he would just look at the stone and he and he turned to the person that was next to him and he just said, it's in there. Right. Him speaking to like his sculpture that he was going to build, he could look at the stone and he knew exactly what that thing was going to turn into. I pride myself on being able to, being able to do the same in terms of the people that I get to come across. People that have been told that they're hopeless, they can't do this, they can't do that. I think it's in there for, for all, for all of them. I think it's in there for you, right? Um, And you need to keep those people around you that, that believe that. And you don't need them forever, right? Sometimes Inky Johnson has such a, a phenomenal quote. He says, sometimes you have to borrow my belief until you, until you establish your own. And I think that's what good coaches, good mentors, good parents, that's what they do. They, uh, they let kids and, and, and young adults borrow the belief they have in them until they start to see things for themselves. And, and then it's time for them to just take off and fly. But you mix these three things. You mix the physical side, getting up, doing the work physically, following the system, following the blueprint, um, really, really being deliberate and methodical about the changes that you're making. You do that. You tie that with the, with the mental side of things, you know, being able to kind of disassociate yourself from what is reality and fact at the moment and see what it is in your ultimate end goal and assume that feeling from the end. It's not enough just to see it. You have to feel what it would be like. You have to envision that feeling of you hitting big shots. What do, what do you feel in your body when that kind of stuff happens? Um, you take that and then you mix it with the social side of everybody, keeping the people around you that believe in what your ultimate vision is. And man, I, I don't know how you don't end up more confident. One of the things that I've been doing is uh, I've been writing down every day what I believe or who I believe that I am. And I found it to be extremely powerful. Again, as somebody who still has these moments of like, it's like an imposter syndrome type thing that every morning when I wake up, if I start just writing in my I am book, um, it's, it's a reminder. It's a reminder of, of where I've come from and where I'm going, what I still have to accomplish. And it really kind of kicks, kickstarts my day right into to me hitting the weight room uh, at five o'clock in the morning every day. And, you know, little, little things like that. Again, it's not enough just to write something down. You have to have action behind it. But I have now recommended to a few players and, uh, and have a few players that still carry around their, their books of, of writing down who they are and who they believe themselves to be, even if present reality does not necessarily reflect that thing. So, you know, I, I hope this, I hope this really, really helps. There's some amazing books out there, and really this is me kind of just regurgitating in an extremely crude way some of the people that have written amazing, amazing work on it. But um, there's a book by Neville Goddard called The Power of Awareness that I've listened to now over, I can't tell you how many times I listened to it. During the month of January, I listened to that book every single day. It's a short book doesn't take a whole lot of time, um, but I, I, I listened 
if not through it, through at least five or six chapters of it a day. And it completely reframed how I was starting to, to take in information, what I chose to, to concern my time with and what I decided to leave out. And um, things are, you are, there are things unknowingly vying for your attention all day long, right? Social media is vying for your attention. The TV is vying for your attention. Different relationships you have are vying for your attention. And if you're not careful enough to kind of sit back and kind of audit the relationships that you have, not just with people, but with those different devices and everything, then it becomes really hard for you to do your thinking for yourself, right? But if you can get control of where it is that you want to go and you can see yourself in the end, man, I think that, uh, I think that just about anything is possible for anybody. And that goes far, far beyond the scope of basketball. So I hope this helped, right? Physical, mental, social. You wrap those three up, you get control of them. It's not easy to do. I'll give one more quick book recommendation because it will take literally 45 minutes to read, not even, um, is The Seven Day Mental Diet by Emmett Fox. And uh, that book right there, uh, I've recommended to, to a heck of a lot of people. Um, I was actually listening to it today as well. And it's one of those things that can really kickstart where you want to be and where you want to live mentally, which ultimately results in where you're going to live physically at some point in time. So that's it. Confidence, shooting the basketball, those three steps. I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have suggestions for things that you'd like to hear on the next uh, at-home clinic, we'll probably dive into more of the, the mechanical side of things. Please, uh, please just let me know in the comments. And until next time, keep shooting.